Okay, so we're going to talk about the way ions move through this membrane circuit. Right, they've got, you're going to talk about the choices they have, and then what we're going to talk about is how we can represent that in a different way, which allows us to set up some mathematical models. Why would we do that, by the way? Why aren't we just happy with the membrane? Well, I mean, if we have a model, then we can sort of predict what's going to happen, right? Especially if it's mathematical. In fact, the other thing you can do is if it's electrical, which is what we're going to get to, you can actually build it, and people have. That's pretty cool. It is. Okay, so we're going to start with, with this. So this is my drawing of a membrane. Each of these is a phospholipid, um, which is what the membrane's made up of. It's got the hydrophobic tails, so the tails that are nonpolar, and then it's got the hydrophilic heads, which are polar. Um, so each of these I've drawn like a head, and we've got our two tails, and so that's our membrane. Mm -hmm. um, right here we've got our channel, our ion channel. Is, is that what it looks like? Um, it sort of looks more like a barrel. Uh huh. But if you take a cross section of barrel, you've just got the two planks. Uh -huh. So this is a sort of offhanded drawing of what it should look like. Okay. And then we're going to say that this is the outside of the cell and this is the inside. Okay. So why don't we focus on potassium ions and assume that this is a potassium ion channel to make things as simple as possible. Where's potassium high in the nerve cell? It's high outside. High outside or high inside? Inside. That's correct. <laughs> high inside. It's high inside. Thank you. So let's start with the potassium channel, <laughs> the potassium ion inside. Okay. Well, first I'm going to say that let's let's put our concentrations down. Okay, that would be good. Um, so that I don't get it wrong again. <laughs> okay. So inside it's like. So let's say. 400 millimolar, yeah. and on the outside? Like 20, maybe. Good. And so what would that mean in terms of the voltage across the membrane from the nerve's equilibrium potential? Well, that would give us a nerve's potential of like negative 80 millivolts. Good. Just because it's, it's higher outside than inside so the fraction is it's a fraction that's right and the log of a fraction is a negative that's right so it lines up with our equation correct okay so now i'm a potassium ion on starting the inside. inside well since there are more of me let me start there okay so let's see there kind of are are two options um if you've got this potential you can try to go through the channel, right? Or you can sort of find yourself close to the membrane, right? You land on the membrane. Okay. So which one do we want to talk about first? Um, we could talk about the channel first. Sounds good. Just heads or tails kind of thing. Um. Okay. So now you have to sort of think of the probability of it getting through the channel. Correct. And what right? can affect that? Well, let's see. Like, there's probably a whole bunch of membrane with only a few channels. Right, right, right. Okay. so it's hard to find it. Membrane landing on the lipid bilayer is going to be much more common generally. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And the channel could be very small. It mm -hmm. could have little sort of bumps in it that mm -hmm. it's hard to get through. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that to a channel? Well, why wouldn't you do that to a channel? Well, if you wanted to only allow a particular kind of ion to permeate through a channel, then making that narrowest point just the right size might make it hard for other ions to get through. Yeah, so you wouldn't get sodium as opposed yeah. to potassium. Now, no potassium. ions are ch uh, no no channels are perfect. There's always some probability they'll permeate other things, but if they're set up properly, the most likely thing to permeate would be for, for example, for potassium. There are channels that actually permeate anything that is positively charged, but Potassium channels are set up so that they only permeate potassium. They primarily permeate potassium. They almost only permeate. That's potassium. it. That's there good. Go. Okay. So, in terms of so you have this this electrical potential. Right. 
right? That's that's pushing you through the membrane. Good. Um, and then you have how difficult it is to get through this. Right. How do you how do you call the difficulty of getting through a, a channel? What would you call that? The resistance. Yeah. That why the we, channel is. Why don't we write that down? Okay. That's a good 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 term. Right. And how do you measure resistance electrically? Do you know what the term is for it? The, uh, the is that unit. That's the one that's in ohms, right? That's in ohms. Why don't we write that down? That's right. Ohms. Yeah. And, and then that's spelled right after the person who described this. A guy named Ohm. All right. His name's on Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. It is? Yes, it is. So if we're working in ohms, we can probably represent this in sort of a circuit, right? We could. Should we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here's where I get fuzzy as a biologist. So ohms in a circuit is represented by... Exactly, that's, what, that, uh, that's the resistor symbol. Yeah, that strange squiggly thing. That strange squiggly thing. Um, and then we've got our... Potential across the membrane, mm -hmm. and that's a battery. That's a battery? That's a battery. Okay. So how do you represent the battery? Uh got should I write battery yeah right battery and what are the measures of units for batteries volts, volts. so put <laughs> v right exactly and put volts see that's something you know you've, you've properly replaced nine volt batteries right uh, yes okay there so, we go okay, okay. So it's not totally alien how okay. do you represent a battery that's these two correct and this one's the negative side, and that one's the positive side. Right. So if we're doing this for out in, we want to have, I think, the long positive side on the outside. Okay. So here's out, we're going to say. Right. Here's in. Right. These are like these two starting Correct. and ending phases. Right. We're going to go through a... Resistor. Yeah. And then separately, but it's really the voltage that's driving us through it is the battery. And how's that battery, battery written? We've got side, side. Right. because it's pushing the charge this way. Yeah. Good. Okay. So that's that's the one option mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. And then the other option, as we said, was for the the positive charge to sort of land here. Yeah. And what happens if there was a positive charge on the other side if that landed there? What would happen? Why don't you draw that little positive charge? It's hanging out there all innocently. And now this one comes across the membrane. Where does it go? Well, likes repel. Right. So it would... And what does it leave behind? Probably a negative charge. That's right. So we can draw out. that. That's right. Okay. We'll draw the negative charge coming in. Right. Or it's just left behind, depending. But mm -hmm. yeah, good. So now we have a plus and a minus. Now, if we have a plus and a minus separated across a membrane, what have we created? Um, a, a difference in charge? It's a difference in charge across the membrane, which is a potential to do work. The charges would love to move to be with each other. They can't because the membrane's in the way. Okay. So we've created a potential to do work. And what, what's the way in which you measure potential? Voltage. That's right. So you're starting to create a voltage across the membrane. By separating the charges across the membrane, that creates a potential to do work or a voltage across the membrane. Okay. So how could we represent this whole lipid bilayer thing? It's just these two sort of, you like, know, plates. plates. Okay. Right? So how would you draw that? Is that, is that what a capacitor does? That's what a does? capacitor does. Okay. It stores charge. So let's... Draw our capacitor. All right. right. Should we write it? That's right, capacitor. And what, yes, uh, I T O R. <laughs> right. And that's measured in farads. So put an F. It's fancy F, right? Um, or sometimes just capital F. And that's, again, after Faraday. Another very. So Volta, by the way, was a, one of the. He was the one who showed that frogs' legs twitched when you put oh, voltage on cool, it. Oh, cool, really? Yeah. And Faraday was one of the ones who's worked out many, many of the laws of elect electromagnetism. Okay, so let's complete the circuit. And this one's got... You have a measure of this is in C, mm -hmm. capital C. 
I'm going to write R, R of K plus, and that's V. Okay. Actually, we could, you know, if that was the Nernst potential, what's the other way that people would write that rather than using a V? A millivolt. That actually, they would use a symbol that represents that it's the equilibrium uh, potential, and they would often just write that as E for this is the Nernst equilibrium potential. But you write that's in volts. And then over here, this would be C for capacitance, and that would also be... Now here, it's not really of the, of the ion channels. It's of the membrane. So that's always written as C sub M. So let's fix that. Okay. Good. I didn't know that either. Yeah, very <laughs> useful. Good. So let's write that C on, because it doesn't have anything to do with the ions. It's independent of the ions, unlike the channels, which we said would be permeable to just one ion. Mm -hmm. And this one we've got our, like, yeah, the positive pluses charges and there. then the minus. So if positive charges have stopped moving, do you get a current through the capacitor? If you just have a whole bunch of pluses on the top, and they've pushed away all those positives, and now they're just sitting there, do you get a, a current? No, because nothing's changing, That's right? right. So you have to have a change in charge to get a change in, to get a current. That's that right. would be delta... <laughs> I see. That's delta Q. Is it capital? Delta yeah, del delta Q, and it's going to be proportional to I. In fact, it is Q changing with time, which is charge yeah and the voltage will change if you change the charges mm -hmm. across the capacitor okay now there's another way of writing the uh, resistance let's talk about that briefly before okay. we're done so if and we may want to put something down mm -hmm. over here if resistance is how hard it is to get through the membrane mm -hmm. Would another way of writing it be how easy it is to get through exactly. the membrane? Exactly. So what would you do to the resistor? You could take... So it could be like 1 over? Yeah, 1 over the resistor. And then that equals, there's a symbol that's used for 1 over R. What's that equal to? Is that G? Yes. And what's that called? This is the conductance. That's right. Let's write that down. And the units for that? Should be. It used to be, actually, I mentioned to you, MOS, M-H-O, which is it just should ohms be backwards. Mose. But nowadays it is written as S. Siemens, S-I-E-M-E-N-S, Siemens, or capital S. And again, after somebody who was a pioneer of understanding this sort of thing. So you could, next to the RK+, plus, the other way of writing that would be G, or, right, GK+. Plus. Okay, so I think that's good. We've gone from looking at the membrane to describing these different electrical properties to an electrical equivalent circuit, and I think that's enough for right now. What do you think?